Hey friends, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another monthly reset video. Today is March 6th, so I'm filming this video so late. I actually did think about this last week, but I didn't do anything about it specifically. Um, but we're here now and I figure if it's before like the 10th, I think it's totally fine to do a reset video for the month. We're still early in the month, so don't beat yourself up if you haven't done this yet. You can do it anytime, you don't ever, just, you know, okay. Anyway, welcome back and let's reset for the month of March. Well, in this video, we're just gonna have a little chat about the entire month of February. It is um, the beginning sort of-ish of spring here in Boston, Massachusetts. And I had quite the month last month. So we're gonna reflect on that and we're gonna talk about the goals and my aspirations for th this month that we're currently in. Um, so a lot of this is already happening, but um, I just wanted to take some extra time to reflect on last month because it was so important how I'm feeling, what I learned from it, and some challenges and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started in this monthly reset. Okay, so this template is my Notion template created by my friend Katie Calloway. I, I did link her template from last year in the video that I made last month, but then I think she changed the link, um, but this will hopefully be the correct link. I did change that link in the last video so that hopefully you can find it again, but I just find this to be a really good template for the reflection of the month and I made the text extra big today so everyone can see it, but let's talk about last month. So um, what did I accomplish? The main thing I accomplished is getting through the month. If it's your first time seeing me, I'm a full-time YouTuber. I have two other YouTube channels. And um, in addition to that, I am also a professional classical singer, but I consider myself a little bit of a late bloomer. Uh, so last month was my very first time doing a very major solo thing in a big hall where lots of people were gonna see me. And it was uh, it was a big deal for me. Um, I have always wanted to do something like this, but it, the opportunity never came along. And I had some events that happened along the way in my career, which kind of uh, killed my confidence a little bit. So I never really pursued much of anything. And I don't, I don't wanna minimize the other times where I did sing in front of the choir with orchestra in other, um, with, with like with other organizations that actually has happened before. However, um, this was the first very much higher caliber performance and it was a, a, a really big deal for me. So uh, if you don't know, I sang one of the really special arias in Bach's St. Matthew Passion. If you are not familiar with that, that is an oratorio, which is uh, tells the passion story, which is the story of, of Jesus Christ's Last Supper, persecution, trial, and crucifixion story and burial story. So um, there are several passions out there, but St. Matthew Passion, um, written by Johann Sebastian Bach, is one of the most famous passions written in all of Western music. It's, it's definitely 100% my favorite piece of music. Um, even if you're not particularly religious, uh, there's something really special about the drama of the story and the, the word painting and musical painting in the, in the work is just amazing. It's three hours, it's an epic work, but it is one of the most famous pieces in Western music and I was really honored to be able to sing a solo. Anyway, I auditioned for a solo in which I actually got it. I was shocked because usually things like that don't happen for me. So I was really, really nervous about it, but it was, it was, it was good. <laughs> so I have these bullet points about the passions, uh, just so I don't, I feel like I don't want to forget the things that I want to talk about, about my, the days leading up to it and the actual performance. Um, I had a, a really hard time at the rehearsal. There is one opportunity to do 
a rehearsal with the orchestra before the performance, which for me is not enough rehearsal, but it's just what we got <laughs> because St. Matthew Passion is really expensive. And so they have to use their time really wisely. So in my aria, there is a portion where there is continual, that's uh, the bass instruments, uh, harpsichord or organ, and the wind instruments that we're playing. And then with the actual aria, which is the song I was singing, there are two other, uh, three other instrumentalists. There are two, there are two English horns, which are a kind of oboe-ish uh, thing, and uh, one flute. So there's not a lot of instrumentation below me, which is really great because I don't have a really loud singing voice. And I was glad to have the opportunity not to be fighting against the entire orchestra when I was singing. Um, but regardless of that fact, I still was asked to sing out at rehearsal, which means can you turn up the volume a little bit more? Can you sing a little louder? And if you are a singer and you have heard that a lot of the time, it's it can be a little bit triggering to hear that because it you, I feel like a lot of the time when I am singing forte or loud that I am pushing and screaming and it's not enough. There are some coordination issues I, I'm probably having that have a lot to do with that. I was talking with my teacher about it and she's like, hey, you know, you are what you are. <laughs> your larynx is small, your neck is small, your face is small. You're going to have a harder time than people with different shaped bodies than you. And, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit more in this area, but there's only like so much you can do and you need to accept that your voice is what it is. And part of that is hard for me. And then part of that is, it's really frustrating because I feel like I did get better over the last six months at getting some of that coordination, but I, apparently I have a long way to go. So anyway, when I was asked to sing out at rehearsal, um, I just was frustrated because it felt like I was making enough sound and I guess that it, you know, I needed more. So I attempted to give it all I, I could at the rehearsal and I just felt really nervous after that. I felt like, oh, here's this opportunity that I'm waiting for all this time and now I'm, I'm too quiet, like no one's going to hear me. Um, the flute is resonating way more than me and that was my duet partner. The two English horns are, are also my ensemble partners, but they're more acting more like accompaniment uh, if – I'm, I mean, they're important, but the, the, the melody line was really with me and the flute. So um, they're more a har harmonic component. So I, I really wanted to match the flute in her resonance. And, you know, and, and actually she was really amazing to work with, Jacqueline DeVoe, who is a really great flutist here in Boston. She was so sweet and... I, you know, I talked with her and she made sure she was like, I really don't want to, I don't want to cover you. I want to be with you. Um, you know, well, let's be together. And we would run away into like a little corner in the hallway and do the first, you know, 10 measures of the piece and, you, tr you know, pump each other up. And it was really, it was just a really good experience, first experience to have like that. Um, with somebody who was a really sensitive artist and a really sweet person and made me feel really comfortable because the, I I was very nervous about the entire thing. I, I felt really like a fish out of water. I'm, I'm really comfortable in my professional life being an ensemble member. It's much less, less pressure. Um, but when it's just me up there with, you know, a duet partner and some other instrumentalist, conductor, I feel really vulnerable. And it's something I'm going to have to get used to hopefully. Um, but working with Jackie was really great and she made me feel really good and, and um, it was really wonderful to sing with her. Um, so the, the, the dress rehearsal I felt better about <laughs> um, because of the feed from some feedback from people that were, you know, in the choir and stuff. And so I, I was, I felt like I could get it together. Um, and the day of the performance, I felt really good and felt really ready. I did sing for an hour before my aria was supposed to be, because uh, the piece is three hours. Um, so I sang for over an hour 
I mean, intermittently, I, you know, the chorus isn't singing the whole time. It's, it's a lot of the piece is actually solo arias. And chorus two, a lot. Like, there, it's the piece is split into two choruses, and chorus two is way over there. I didn't sing in chorus two. I sing in chorus one. They have a lot more material than chorus one. Um, so I've sat for a lot of it. <laughs> but I was able to um, sort of wait and be patient. And then the funny thing about this whole experience was there are a lot of people on stage doing this at Sanders Theater at Harvard, um, which is a really great place to perform. It's really welcoming as far as, like, sound resonance is concerned and the whole issue was there are a lot of there's two orchestras and two choruses on stage and also two continuos there's a harpsichord and an organ on stage and so the the choreography of having soloists come out of the chorus and get to downstage center was really complicated <laughs> and there was a whole like thing that had to happen overnight after the first rehearsal I think of not the dress rehearsal but the first actual like rehearsal at the venue because it just was really disruptive to have people come through during some of the more tender moments the logistics of it all was so complicated because there were so many different soloists that had to come out of the chorus that had to go different routes through around the stage it was really a lot but it worked really well the whole time I'm sitting in one of the soloist seats waiting to sing, I'm in my mind looking out into the audience, not looking at anyone's face specifically, but just looking. And it was the most nerve wracking feeling because there were um, about a thousand seats available in Sanders Theater and it, w it wasn't sold out, but there were like 630 people in the audience. And I could, you know, I, I was just like, wow, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> and um, I didn't, I, I had that thought briefly and then sort of let it go. And and at that moment when it was time for me to, to do my thing, I just let all of that go. And I was like, it's time for me to, to do my job. And which was the best attitude I think I could have taken because if I would have thought about like how I was sounding, what I looked like, whatever, um, it would not have served me. I did get to the front of the stage and get a really awkward stance, but I thought it was a too delicate a moment to like adjust. So I didn't really adjust, which is something I probably should have done and would do next time, but it was fine. Um, the recitative before my aria didn't go as well as I thought it did. It was the part of the thing that I was least familiar with. Um, norm I've known the aria for like 20 years. And when you bring it to auditions and stuff, you just bring the aria. You don't bring the recit usually, which is the little talky, talky bit that comes before it. I'm, I'm trying to be more layman's terms. But um, so it went sort of OK. But then the aria I sang, I don't remember any of how it went. I just remember trying to focus. And the thing about it that was so funny is there is a very long introduction, a very long um, prelude before I start to sing. It's got to be like 30 or 40 seconds long where I just had to make up this subtext in my head. <laughs> um, and I was like thinking it the whole time. I had actually done this before uh, I, you know, got to the stage. I had like, was, what am I going to do during that 40 seconds where Jackie is playing and I'm not singing? So I just had this whole subtext of things I was thinking and wanted to get across with my face. I know that people were, were not going to look at me. They were going to look at Jackie, but um, I wanted to be, you know, in the moment as well. And I think it worked really well. I think that there are a lot of sports psychology is the same for, it works really well for singing and performing in any context. I'm finding a lot more similarities between sports and singing than ever before. I think they're the same psychology. I think that you need to imagine yourself like doing the performance, all that stuff, and then doing the performance. <laughs> anyway, after I was done, we got through the rest of the piece. There was probably like an hour left after I sang. And all I was thinking was, I did it. We did this. And I just was very emotionally moved by the rest of the performance. I was in tears and cried during the final baritone aria um and i was absolutely trying to keep it together during the last chorus of the piece <laughs> like i was crying but i was like i need to sing because everyone you know 
I need to sing because I need to get through the piece. But overall, it was just a really amazing, incredible experience. And I feel like I want to do it again. <laughs> I actually went to dinner with my four best friends after at an Indian restaurant. And they were, uh, it, it was amazing that they were there because they screamed the loudest during our, um, during our bows. We had, first of all, I, the conductor, um, whose name is Noah Horn, is just, I'm fascinated by his brain because I feel like he just, I, I, I don't know how he does this stuff. He, he memorized the order of everybody singing. And I think there were, gosh, there must have been like 25 different arias, maybe. Maybe that's not it. Maybe it's like 20. I don't, I don't know how many arias there are in The Passion, but there's like, like over 20 different solo parts. And he was going to memorize the the, the order and everyone specifically where they're standing, point to them, they stand up and bow. And I'm like, how, how did you do that? <laughs> so, but anyway, my friends were there and they of course screamed when I stood up, which made me feel really good. <laughs> and then um, afterward, I just felt really emotional. I mean, I shot that video the next day. I cried in the morning. I cried in the afternoon. I cried like the next day after that. I just was very emotional about the fact that that actually happened and that I I had finally sort of crushed this demon, I guess, that had been on my shoulder about like the one time that I had that opportunity, but then it didn't happen. And I was so mortified and heartbroken over it that I never really got past it. And that, the fact that I actually like went over the hump with that was really emotionally moving for me, I guess, and I just couldn't stop crying. I, of course, feel really critical over my own performance. I mean, I feel like I could have sung better. And in the recording, that the orchestra is louder than all of the singers. I don't know if that's a, like a balance issue with the with the mics or the recording, um, but th that's how it comes across with everyone, except if they had a really, really, really big voice. So I don't feel like I did a bad job um, resonating, but I, you know, I do feel like I could have improved some of my, I don't know, phrases or whatever. But um, I feel like it was a good first attempt, and uh, that was it was effective. I feel like it was effective. I I got really good feedback from a lot of people. Um, including people who I saw two weeks later at um, church. So um, there are people that were like playing, there were two different violinists that came up to me after the fact, actually like this weekend, um, and were like, your solo two weeks ago was really, um, I, I liked it so much. And so I, I, I love that, um, that it made an impression. And that's really important to me. It's more important to me that um, I'd be a, an effective artist rather than a perfect singing athlete. I would love to be a perfect singing athlete. I'm not. But if I can move people in ways that are through artistry, I think that's a good trade-off for me. So um, here's hoping that we get another chance to do some more. <laughs> so what challenged me last month, I getting sick definitely was the number one challenge. I hadn't been sick since 2021. So we're talking about three years of pretty much being very healthy. And it was really upsetting. The timing was upsetting. I was really sick. I was really down. And I just w was terrified that I was going to not be able to do the performance. But we got through. And my key lesson, and that takes me to my key lesson and takeaways. And the, the, basically my key lesson from that is that shit happens. <laughs> and I, I hadn't been sick at all really like that since the pandemic started. And I've been terrified of getting sick at all since the pandemic started. I'm usually pretty healthy, um, but getting sick was one of my biggest fears. 
and kind of going through it and just being okay with the fact that it, like it happens uh, made me feel a lot better and more brave to like go out and do things because I have been pretty much hermiting since 2020 and you know as far as like going out and doing things where there are a lot of people but I I'm kind of coming out of my my cocoon a little bit and you know the pandemic has really changed a lot of us in the way that we relate to the world it's 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 been damaging in some ways but been better better in other ways but it, for me personally having put the whole like singer thing on top of it it has made me more anxious to go out where I might potentially get infected by someone um but I've been exposed so many times to so many different illnesses that I'm I'm just rolling the dice just the same I was back before COVID so I just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get back out there and get over it <laughs> okay for last month as far as notables there's nothing really to be talked about really there was no travel um I did read I did start to read I'm mostly through it but I I still have a little bit little bit to go brain energy by Chris Palmer if you are, of course, I, if you're not familiar, I, I love to read nonfiction books, especially science books. And this book is written by a psychiatrist by the name of Chris Palmer, Chris Palmer. And his theory, his hypothesis is that mental health and physical health are definitely related and that a change in diet can improve symptoms of psychiatric illnesses such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, um, other psychotic disorders, depression, anxiety, um, not cure, uh, but perhaps help um, or do something. And I'm just very curious. And the book is quite good so far. Um, all the music and stuff podcast, of course, I have not done, listen to any other music than music I'm studying. That is the Kind of the bad thing about being working a lot in music is that the music that you consume is probably music you need to learn and study. So I've been more consuming music I need to learn and study rather than taking in new music just for pleasure. Notable people are actually Dana Whiteside, who was um, singing with me in the St. Matthew Passion in his first ever role of Jesus. This is a major, major, major thing to do as a baritone if you are um, a concert artist. And it is, it was such a special thing for both of us to be in the performance. We've been cheering each other on for years now. Um, and there's something about seeing your friends win that is like so, just so special. And Dana is such a warm person and a, a beautiful voice. And the role of Jesus is something really, 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 really special. Um, in Bach, Jesus is always a, a baritone or bass. Um, and it's just a really special role to sing. And he did a bang up, bang up, bang up job. I hope he gets to do it again. Um, so movies and TV, we watched True Detective season four. I liked it. I thought it was fine and good. Um... I, a lot of people did not like it. I liked it. I liked it. And purchases and products. I have recently discovered the churro coffee from Copper Cow. Now, Copper Cow coffee is like, I think it's Vietnamese coffee. And it, you can do like a pour over thing. Comes with a little creamer. I have stopped eating like sugar, sugar. So I don't really do the latte thing anymore. But I have bought the churro coffee, which is basically just coffee and cinnamon. It's pre-ground. Um, but I've been using it for like my, my, my pour over in the morning and it is so tasty. And I know that I could probably just put cinnamon in my ground coffee, but this is fun and something that I enjoy. So I will highly recommend it if you are interested in trying it. You can get it at Whole Foods or you can order it directly from Copper Cow, but it is delicious. I highly recommend. And I got dress sleeves for my black dresses so that I can be modester, more modest <laughs> at concerts because there are often dress codes at concerts being like no short sleeves or you know you can't have like strappy things so you have to wear sleeves so I 
we'll also link those down below if you're looking for like dress sleeves. Okay, we already talked about that stuff, about the memories and stuff like that. So my goals and habits for this month, March, we finally are talking about March. So I'm gonna continue to push myself in the gym, which means just in here in my office because I don't I, I don't have a gym membership. I have a, a membership to Future, which is a workout app I like to use. And I have a personal trainer who I connect with on that app and she gives me a whole workout plan. And I do that in my office during the week. And I can when I continue to push myself, to build muscle because um, I feel like building muscle is something I really need to be focusing on. And in that, I need to increase my protein consumption so that I can focus on building muscle. I eat a lot of protein anyway, um, but I think I would like to increase it just slightly so that I can focus on building muscle, of course. Um, I have uh, an ENT issue. I, after I got sick, I found that I was really congested and I had muffled hearing for three weeks and just general congestion and grossness for almost a month after I got sick. Um, and that was really discouraging. Um, I did start taking Flonase again, which I don't love to take steroidal medication or whatever, but it was really my last resort because I've been trying neti pot and all kinds of stuff. But it really, it, it actually did clear it up pretty well and I'm gonna continue to do that for as long as I need to, especially now that spring is coming and allergies are gonna start. Love to see it. I would like, I need to make an appointment for to my blood test. I had a physical in December and they forgot to do some blood work. So I'm gonna have to go back for that. I've been course procrastinating uh, because January and February have passed and I have not gone to get the blood work. And to do the Cologuard, I have been I have been delaying on doing, doing the Cologuard. I, I just, if you know what it is, you know what it is. I do have to do it. I'd rather do that than have a colonoscopy. But just the idea of it, I'm not like looking forward to it, but I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to do it. We're doing it next week. Okay, for my career, um, career in business, we're gonna, uh, I got some brain deals to wrap up which is exciting. I'm going to follow up with some agencies because I don't like doing my own negotiations and I'd really like to have someone do that for me. Um, I'm going to be planning time for content planning, which I have been which I've been procrastinating, procrastinating, procrastinating on, but I find that that really helps when I do that. Um, I need to continue to work through my singing issues and get through my four performances this month. I, you know, to be really honest, I'm going to be on survival mode for most of the month of March, which is why I'm giving myself the goals that are kind of flexible. Um, four performances for me is, a, it feels like a lot to me. One of them is, has these French songs, which is in the next thing underneath, that are, I'm finding extremely challenging. French is not my first singing language. It's, I'm and I don't normally sing in French. I had basic French diction and French uh, language classes in high school and in college and in graduate school. And the thing about the real world is no one pays me to sing in French ever. I get paid to sing in German, Italian, Latin, English, um, and that's about it. And I, when there's French, I'm like, woo, how odd. Um, so I, it's, it's rare. Um, I've been paid more to sing in Russian than I've ever, than I've been paid to sing in French. So it, it does continue to be a challenge for me. It's more the vowel sounds than anything else. So I'm just really struggling to get through this concert, which is in two weeks, but I, we're just gonna push through. We're gonna push through. The other performances I'm not super worried about um, because we're German and Latin and we're, we're probably gonna just roll, we're, we're free rolling the other ones in English. Um, and so we're, we're doing good. Finance, of course, I'm gonna follow up on taxes. It's tax time in April, so oh my gosh. Personal goals, I wanna take time for planning, play more video games for me. <laughs> because I create content on my gaming channel, I play a lot of games for my audience, which is fun, don't get me wrong. But earlier last month, I bought a game called Another Code Recollection for Switch, was it, which is two 3DS games that were out on 3DS, but now they're on Switch. And I've just been playing that just before bed, just chilling just for me. And I've really been enjoying it. Like I love just playing games just for me sometimes. And it's a puzzle game, like a mystery game, 
Um, and I really, really, it's really, really fun. It's not the perfect game, but it's been really, really fun. So I want to play more of those like just for me games um, where I don't have to make content or feel like I need to, you know, be funny when I'm playing it. Um, so I want to do more of that. And I want to sow seeds and prepare my garden for spring. It is warmer now than it usually is in March. So I feel like I'm gonna have to do this sooner than later, but I'm really excited to plant our um, vegetable garden and our flower garden. I did find some milkweed pods during my dog walk this morning and I'm hoping to sprout them. I I don't know how much success I'm gonna have with them, frankly. I feel like I do wanna protect them though because we do have a lot of rabbit activity <laughs> in our neighborhood. So I think once I, I'm gonna try and sow them. I, I put them in the fridge actually because I think they have to be cold, but I think I'm gonna thaw them out, try to sprout them, and then put them in the yard in the garden because milkweed's really good for butterflies, all the other insects, and you just help the general ecosystem. So they're not like the prettiest plant, but I, they're good for the environment. So we like to do that with me and they're native. That's the ultimate prop lifting, by the way. I was on a dog walk and I was like, there was a, a milk pot, milk weed pod that I saw I was like, Row! and I looked inside the pod to see what the seeds look like. And there were so many of the seeds that had fallen on the, on the sidewalk. And I was like, what? what are the odds I can sprout these and we can have milkweed? So we'll see how well that works. I don't know. All right, for self-care, I'm gonna can look into some other skincare options. I feel like I'm getting older. I need to maybe have some more nourishing stuff for at night. Not that like my skin looks bad at this point, but I noticed that we're getting a little more dry. We're starting to show a little bit more fine lines, which is fabulous. I'm, I'm you know, we're aging gracefully, but you know, I'm gonna try to take a little bit more better care of my epi epithelium is that what is that what it's called epidermis is that what that is and i want to continue to do my nails i normally i'm not a nail girl but i feel like i my nails look pretty good nowadays i'm growing them a little longer which i don't know how long i can tolerate but i've been i've been painting them i've been doing a little I've been trying to keep them looking nice and I'm liking the way that it's making me feel, making me feel really feminine. So I'm gonna continue to do that. And my last self-care thing is to just to get through. Again, we're in survival mode in March. <laughs> I have so much to do, including those five actual concerts. So I mean, sorry, four actual concerts. Now having four concerts means I have a lot more rehearsals. So it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot. The only thing, the only like concert I'm not worried about is the other St. Matthew Passion because I don't have a solo in that one. And we, I just did the St. Matthew Passion and this time I get to sing in chorus too, which I, I remember saying in the beginning of the video, it was so much more material, but it's much more interesting material. So I'm really excited to like be able to sing in chorus too. Um, and I, I, I know how it goes anyway, cause I was there. So I'm really excited to do the same Matthew Passion again, but have it be like a low pressure experience. It's gonna be really, it's gonna be really fun and pretty. So if you are looking to watch the same Matthew Passion uh, at Cantata Singers, which is the one I just did, it is available for purchase. I did upload the solo of me singing if you just wanna see that, because it is it is a long commitment to ask. It is three hours, but if you just want to hear St. Matthew Passion, it is gorgeous. Every solo that every soloist that stepped out of the choir was phenomenal and beautiful. And it was just a really, really amazing experience. I do think it was Noah Horn's first time doing St. Matthew Passion in, uh, you know, in the conductor's position. And I just, I admire his efforts. I think he did a really good job setting everything up and guiding everyone and it was just a really special day for everyone and we yeah it was it was really special so now we're working through the zanstrom messiah which we had our first rehearsal for last week and oh my gosh it, it's hard it's not just hard it's like high all of the voc all of the vocal parts are really high all the time which is good for me but not good for everyone else Anyway, I do think this is a really long reset video. I spent a lot of the time mostly just like chatting with you and catching up after 
the whole month last month and I just want to say um, thank you for all of your nice comments on the, the, the vlog about the concert and the, the video of the aria. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I do still really battle with, you know, all of those demons that I, I, we talk about. Um, but I just, I feel like it's really important for me as, um, an, an artist and as somebody who's older than 30, um, and somebody who is a person of color to talk about um, those feelings and the experiences that I have in classical music because I don't feel like there's a lot of people talking about that online. I keep trying to find vlogs of other classical singers recording their day, how they feel, and talking about it, and I just don't find it. So I... I feel like there's a gap and I feel like I want other singers to talk about how they're feeling, their personal experiences, uh, just so they feel like it's normal for them and they feel like they're not alone because sometimes I feel like, gosh, I, I'm the only one who feels like this and I must be a freak. But I, it turns out that it's a lot more common than I think. So that's my goal. All right, I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to start a new vlog. We got to reset today a little bit. And I'll see you next month in April when it's my birthday month. And we'll do, well, it's also tax month because, oh my good Lord. Anyway, I hope you're taking care of yourself and the ones around you. And I'll see you next month for the next reset. Thanks for watching. Bye.